off screen than on screen. <laughs> Hi, I think we're live. Oh, wonderful. Great. I am so excited for tonight. Y'all just do not know. Um, but welcome, everybody, to the Friends and Fiction Official Book Club again tonight. I'm Brenda Gardner from South Carolina, and with me is my lovely co-host, Lisa, in Atlanta. Hi. And we are so excited to have Patty Callahan Henry with us tonight for another session. Patty's the New York Times bestselling author of the bookshop at Waters End, and she's also a USA Today bestselling author. She's a recipient of the Christie Award to 2019 Book of the Year, the Harper Lee Distinguished Writer of the Year for 2020, and the Alabama you take Library me out before you do all this. Just look like <laughs> Wait, you're making faces <laughs> for 2019. Okay, I can't continue. We want to brag on you. You're so Okay, go ahead. Though. Like we've sort of this is like yes. go on this whole hour bragging about you. And this is the grand finale, but we know her best <laughs> as one of the fabulous friends in fiction co-hosts, the Fab Five, and now podcaster. Welcome, Patty. Thanks, Welcome. Mel. Did you watch the Emmys last night at all? I did. Um, yes. Well, when the main guy was trying to. Um, give this really heartfelt, the, the director of the Academy of Television, he was giving this really heartfelt speech and Conan O'Brien was in the back, like making faces. <laughs> and so I felt like I was doing that to you. I was just... That was funny. I, I did see that, that was funny. Yeah. Well, there is one other title that I'd like to mention. You were also the originator of PB and J. Oh, that's right. <laughs> right. Which has taken on a life of its own, I must say. Well, I have to tell you that I'm proud of a lot of things in my life. <laughs> and they've meant a lot to me. But that is that is right up there. I'm thinking about adding it to my official bio and just saying. Oh, I mean, you guys even have jewelry that says that now. We so, do, and it's very, we do. And it's very nice. We will have to feature it on another on another segment. Yeah. Oh my goodness, it's hard to be it's hard to be a serious host here when we're <laughs> okay. I'll be very such serious. A fun, we're having such a fun giggly time. I'm the but silly one, so that's are, good for me. <laughs> we are here tonight to talk about something really cool, even though it's been a while since you've um, talked about it. I think, but about um, the bookshop at Waters End, and I know you had a fabulous event yesterday about Once Upon a Wardrobe, and we're going to talk about that may, um, at the end, but we're kind of stepping back a little bit and and uh, having you talk about, a, what did you say, Four Books Back book? of Four uh, Books Back, so this Waters came out, End. I've had three books out and two novellas out since this book came out. Wow, and I know yeah. it's been a while, but we have been so excited about reading this book. I read it and then reread it for tonight's discussion oh, and awesome. I'd like for, for you to to summarize it for anyone who hasn't read it but before you do that I just want to say I I just thought it was an amazing novel I always enjoy novels with strong female relationships and they were sort of multi-layered in this book amongst Bonnie and Lainey and Piper and Mimi and even Loretta because she was wise in so many ways you know Yep. Um, that didn't become apparent for a while. But would you be willing to summarize the bookshop at Waters End for us tonight? Absolutely. And I, when we decided, or y'all decided and asked me to talk about this book, I just felt so smiley because even though this book came out in 2017 and I've had three books and two novellas out since, this book has a really special place in my life and in my heart. It is set in Waters End, South Carolina, which is a made up town, but which is actually very much based on Bluffton, South Carolina, which is where I am at this exact second. And it all started because I start, began to wonder about this idea of what would happen if the very things you used to define yourself were stripped away. If, if the word, like when you say I'm a mother, a wife, a daughter, a teacher, an author, 
what would happen if you made such a huge mistake that it got stripped away from you? So because I'm a cruel author, her daughter is leaving for college, her husband, their marriage is falling apart, and she defines herself as this very capable emergency room doctor. And it is the kind of ground cornerstone of who she is. And she makes a terrible mistake one night. And to make it worse, the reason she made the mistake is because it was an old love that came in on the stretcher. And she, she just, she was ungrounded, she got unmoored and she made a terrible mistake. So it makes her, as, as often in my contemporary fiction happens, it makes her go backwards. Because I think sometimes the only way forward is backward. And not in our actions, but looking at how we got where we are so that we just don't keep repeating it. And she returns to this town of Water's End where her best friend's mother disappeared one summer. And the rest of the story unfolds. It's very much to, I was inspired by a trip I took um, with my mom and sisters and husband and kids uh, about five years ago to the place where I spent my summers, which is Cape Cod, Massachusetts. And I was very inspired by returning to the house where we spent our summers. And I have not been to that house since I was 12 years old. And walking onto the property and seeing the lake, all these memories came rushing back in. And it hit me even more than usual that Memory is landscape and landscape is memory. So those are the two places the book came from. Wow, I love that. <laughs> I, I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit because that's just fascinating. You mentioned, and I can't believe I didn't realize it was Bluffton first of all, cause yeah. I'm like, yeah, of course it is being, <laughs> living in South Carolina, but you, you do, use rivers a lot in in your novels to um to bring that story to life and to to show people's journey so I just thought it was interesting that you said that you know I I am obsessed with rivers I really am um whether they're the small you know rushing kind over boulders and rocks or whether they're the one that's right here in South Carolina, which is technically more of a bay than the river. And rivers to me are this metaphor for almost everything, whether it's our life, whether it's a journey, there's this great poem and I'm not looking at it, so I'll mess it up, but that if we could have the faith that a river has, because it always ends up where it was going. It ends up in the sea every single time, right? So whether it's frozen or over rocks or dammed and then has to get around, it always ends up in the sea. And I love that idea of that kind of faith that our life is moving to where it's destined to be. And I just, I, I, the, the metaphors of a river are, are endless. And you just mentioned Bluffton um, and how you didn't realize it was in Bluffton. Three of my novels are set in Water's End. So the first was The Idea of Love, this one, and then The Favorite Daughter. And they're all, one's in a pub, one's in a bookshop, and one's in a wedding store. So I picked these little places in the town and set all three books in different places. So. That's right. Mimi is from a prior novel, yeah. isn't she? Yeah. And I have not read the prior, so that'll have to be next on my list. Yeah, we'll okay. have to do that one next year. But yes. thank you. You are eminently quotable, Patty. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. Yeah. I'll tell my family that. <laughs> There's so many great quotes in this book. And thank you. one of our one of our book club members made a post yesterday, Bubba Wilson. Hi, Bubba, I hope you're watching. Hi. And she shared one of her favorite quotes and asked members to share some of theirs. And there's so many good ones. I so love Bubba's that. favorite was, 
some of the best things in life we have to wonder about forever. And that's also one of my favorites. And then Julie said that as she read the last hundred pages or so, she started taking pictures of pages with amazing life lesson lines. And there were so many gems. So her first was art and stories offer meaning to our lives in a way nothing else can. Wow. I mean, Patty, come on. You're so amazing. I, okay. I believe that sometimes our writing is a lot smarter than we are. There mm-hmm. is this really fascinating quality and liminal space that the, when the writing comes out and we read it, we're like, oh yeah, but it doesn't feel like I said it, right? There's this gotcha. wisdom in writing that is smarter than I am. And some of my characters are a lot, like Mimi is a lot smarter than I am. So. <laughs> but you created Mimi. So. Yes. I know. She came and from you. She must be in there somewhere. She's in there well, somewhere. I often say that um, sometimes these characters, of course, because we have characters who don't do very good things either. So I don't get to claim only the good oh. characters and not the bad. So there's this idea for me that our characters aren't us in any way, but they are from us. So the good, the dark, the light, the bad, if we can imagine it, it's coming from us, but it's not always who we are. It's, it's a weird thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's an amazing, to me, scientifically, it's just fascinating the way your brain can come up with those things. And yet you're yeah. surprised by the way they turn out. But I'm, 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 I'm horning in on Lisa's quotation time. So. Oh, yeah. That, oh, no, no. This is, this is how, this is what we love about our, how we roll. I was going to yeah. say, let's just all horn in on each other. That's the best way to do it. So there's a few more I wanted to share. Asa says, my favorite quote comes towards the end. There I was standing in a bookshop with a boy who loved me, surrounded by stories and friends. I just love that so much. It's so good. Chills. I remember writing that. Isn't that crazy? It's so good. Yeah. I mean, isn't that what we, isn't that where we all want to be, right? Surrounded by friends and stories in a bookshop. It's like. And love. And right? love. The ideal, yeah. The ideal place. And but, I remember writing that and thinking this journey, no spoilers, but the journey this person was on, it was like, that's where she ends up. That's what it means. Yes. Yeah. And Anissa, our dear friend Anissa said the first sentences of the book. We are defined by the moods and whims of a wild tidal river surrounding our small town, cradling us in its curved basin. We don't shape it, it shapes us. This set the tone for the entire book for her, she said. And I, I have to I have to agree. That's just, oh, Patty, this book was so, we could literally have a separate <laughs> discussion. I'm just these talking quotes. about quotes from this so sweet you know sometimes the first line isn't the first line you wrote um Mm. like for example the first line in surviving savannah which is i was born in water came after i'd finished the first draft it wasn't a first line but for this book that was very close to the first line that i wrote because i knew that it was going to be about returning to this tidal basin and this river and that that area had shaped the characters more and that they could not shape the river. They could not change the river. It was going to change them. So thank you, Anise. I'm glad you noticed that. Thank you. (laughs) Well, I'm going to end with one that shares a quote and it kind of goes into a question for you. So um, Sharon says that one of her favorite quotes was Lainey saying before her art show, It was an odd thing to stand in a room full of people with the art created in solitude and then shared in community. And the follow-up question is, is that how you feel as an author when you release a new book? Oh, Sharon, such a great question. And absolutely. There's this 
real, the word that's coming to mind right now, well, it's two words. The phrase that's coming to mind right now is cognitive dissonance because when I'm writing, I have to, in many ways, pretend that no one will ever see it or I can't be brave enough in what I wanna say. And so there's, there's, there's this split self almost that is writing it knowing someone, or well, hopefully someone will read it one day, will simultaneously thinking, wait a minute, I can't write that if somebody's going to read it. So I'm just gonna pretend nobody's ever going to read it. <laughs> so there's this, and then it's in the world, right? Like all of a sudden the book is in the world and people can say whatever they want, right? They can call your baby ugly. They can call it beautiful. They can make fun of something in it. And there's this letting go of it that is another kind of cognitive dissonance where you have to be able to say, that's not mine anymore, right? That's not mine. So I think I gave that feeling to Lainey, seeing her art hung up in this way of, it is odd if, if having other people talk about and look at something that you, you know, created. Um, that's an interesting question. That's, thank you for asking. It, that's exactly how we feel. There's also this fascinating, and I don't hear authors talk about it a lot, so I'm bringing it out of the dark, but we talk about it amongst ourselves, which is when we finish a project, like when, 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 you've, when it's all wrapped up and all done and about to be in the world, there's a, there's a like almost not a depression, but this like letdown, this thing that you have been focused on every day, talking about, thinking about, editing, laboring over, researching, all of that, it's done. And there is a certain amount of like, oh, wow, that's it? Like it's done? So both of those happen. Well, I can mm -hmm. imagine too that when you, once you, and I, the way I've, the phrase that sticks with me is someone who said you release it into the wild you know, yes. yeah, <laughs> but then you've also got this time work where you're already working on something else and yes. you've been working on something else. And, but then you have to get all excited about that thing. You let go. Yes. It's so ago. crazy. <laughs> I was going to compare it to sending a kid off to college, but then I realized that my books don't come back and ask for money for laundry. <laughs> <laughs> <It's true. laughs> oh, that's too funny. Um, well, I'm going to, uh, quick reminder for, uh, for everyone watching, we didn't say, but we'll, we'll do spoilers after 730, even though this is a book that's been out for a while. Those of us who are read it for the first time, will probably appreciate that. And we're going to continue on. And I have kind of a, kind of a quick question, I think, but you, you talked about the bookstore and about Mimi a little bit earlier. So I wanted to ask Carrie's question, which is, is the bookstore based on a real place? No. Um, so when I was writing the book, The Idea of Love, um, my main character went upstairs to tell this neighbor to shut up her yappy dog. And she went upstairs and she knocked on the door. And in my mind, I already knew that this like big hairy man with a beard and a bathrobe with, and a cigar in his mouth was going to answer the door and, and they she'd have to like stand up to him. And instead this little woman opened the door named Mimi. And I was like, where'd you come from lady? And she had owned the bookstore in town and then had to um, close it. So I let her open it again in the bookshop at Waters End. And she just came to me whole and so did her store. But I think the store, to be honest, is probably an amalgam of all my favorite stores. So a little, my favorite part of this store or that store or this store or that store. And part of my favorite um, people who work in the stores too. And I mean, you know, we started, one, one of the many reasons we started Friends and Fiction was to support independent bookstores because we love them so much. And they're the lifeblood of our reading community and of you know the writing community. And my first couple books did something because of indies. 
So there's this big love you have for them. So I just took all my favorite parts and people. And then I also took the feeling you have when you go into an indie like that, you know, where you sit down. And see, that's how I um, kind of felt about reading about the bookstore and Mimi. I kind of felt like it was a place I had been before and it was just, oh, yeah. and it was sort of that feeling that you get. But Mimi really affected generations of people because you saw it even, you know, in this book with Piper and with um, her mom, Bonnie. So I'm going to ask to follow that up, um, whether you, Patty, is there a specific bookstore that has changed you that you remember from your past? And I want to ask our readers that too, so we can pull some of those later on, because bookstores to me are just such magical places. And you talked about that a little bit already. Yeah. I mean, gosh, we'd be here for an hour, but I do have to say, <laughs> I know because there's so many and I have memories in each of these bookstores up and down the coast, left and right, east and west, where different things happened for different reasons. But when I'm going to go all the way back to when I first, you know, started writing, I'm talking 15 years and then 10 years. Um, so my local indie in Atlanta, everybody know, most people know, not everybody. Um, that I lived in Atlanta for 22 years before I moved to Birmingham 10 years ago. And so Foxtail is one of my hometown stores that has always, I've never, there's not a single book I have put out that I have not visited Foxtail. Okay. And the other one is Page and Palette, which is not a hometown, but it's in um, Fairhope, Alabama. And I don't know why, some kind of magic, I don't know, but I just fell in love with that store. And it, um, it also, it appears in my book, Coming Up for Air. So I think it's a little bit the town of Fairhope and also that store and how it's a multi-generational store. Now the granddaughters own it and the grandmother owned it before. And so those two stores among, of course, many, many others really, shaped my idea of what a, a town store should be, where the owners know their clients and, and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, oh. I don't want to hear, hog the time listening to my favorite movie. <laughs> oh, that's Look okay. at my book tour and you'll see we my love favorite. that. Yeah. I was going to say, I think I saw Fairhope on there, I know. Yes. And yes. that's not something I was familiar with, so it, so it stood out. Yeah. Well, right now we're going to do, Patty has graciously offered to do a giveaway tonight. So yeah. that's kind of a surprise. And it is surprise. an autographed copy of the bookshop at Waters Inn. So to enter, we're going to ask <laughs> readers to um, tell us in the chat what your most uh, relatable character is in the bookshop at Waters End and why. And we're going to have a random winner that Lisa is going to announce here in a few minutes. So awesome. Get, get to and it is it. always curious to me. And somebody asked that, and I know we're going to talk about this later, but somebody yeah. asked that yesterday in the wardrobe book, the, the line, the witch in the wardrobe, like what character do you resonate with the most? And I always think that's interesting because I think the answer tells a lot about the person, like, like a Rorschach test or something. But also what I think is fascinating is that it can change with time. So you could ask the question in a year and the answer might be different, so. Oh, I, yeah. I totally, totally agree. I, I think it's even changed for me in between the first and second times of reading this book. So, okay, so answer, who is your, who do you feel, <laughs> both of you tell me, who, are you, who do you feel the most related to? You um, go first, Brenda. Okay, I first related to Bonnie the most, and I, and I still do because of her situation. For one thing, I feel like the mistake she made, because it's not quite 7.30 yet, the mistake she made, I feel like mm -hmm. wasn't entirely caused by her. Right, right, by her and by this dramatic seeing of an old love. But when I read it this time, I kind of focused more on Piper and the yeah. way she kind of was struggling with expressing herself and being able to change. So, yeah, I, yeah. that's that's my two cents. <laughs> Piper came to me whole, like 
She wow. walked on that page, that little <laughs> smarty pants. <laughs> and she owned it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, I was, I was going to say Piper as well, because um, kind of not knowing her place and, and she also started a book club. Yes. True. So, um, I don't know. I felt like I related to her the most, but Mimi was, was in my heart the most oh. because my aunt, um, that's oh. my mean, my aunt was Mimi. Was and she? So, yeah. My aunt. What was her aunt. name? Was her name Mimi? Well, that was what we called her. Her name was Gloria. Gloria. And she okay. passed away this summer. So Mimi holds a big place in my oh, heart. So oh. I love, so I don't know. I'm torn for that. Like my heart was Mimi, but I related. I feel like we all want a Mimi in our life. Just that wise woman who says, mm -hmm. No, sir. No, ma'am. I know you think you're doing that, right? Just someone who speaks the <laughs> truth and love. And I don't know. I love that character. Yeah. Absolutely. It's not my story to tell. Yes, not my story. To tell. <laughs> Even though I could take all of you out of your misery. But <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to ask a few more questions here after we do the giveaway that'll be a little more prying into the into the plot. I'm almost at the winner. So okay. Let me see here. All right. You know, there's you a guys, delay, so I'm you gotta, gotta share. I don't know how you guys are multitasking like that. I'm having trouble just like. <laughs> well, that's why there's two of us for one thing. <laughs> yeah. That's why there's four of us on the show. So you did. <laughs> yeah. You check this, you check that, you turn the page, you ask the question. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, we These have the secrets we're not supposed to tell. I know. Oh, we have a winner? We have, yes. Our winner is Leslie Bodeman. And oh, yeah. she, I think she means Bonnie. It says Bobby, but I think it was Bonnie. <laughs> she was typing too fast. Yeah, she was, she was in a rush. <laughs> Her favorite was Bonnie, though she said she's never made the kind of mistake she did. But she's also a perfectionist. Uh, it's hard so to let go of that. Congratulations, Leslie. Yeah. Make sure you um, reach out to me and Brenda and give us your address, your address. And, pass it along to Patty. and if you want it personalized. Yeah, please. Absolutely. Let me know. Thanks so Yay. much, Lisa. Do we have and thank you, Patty, for doing the giveaway? Yeah, oh, that's so fun. A little extra perk for tonight. Lisa, yeah. do we have anything else from the chat before I, I, I want to ask a question and a little bit about um, a spoiler? So. Well, it's 729, so I think it's okay if you want to go ahead and ask your spoiler question. Okay. I have well, a few I need to go back to, so you can go Okay, ahead. we'll give you time to do that. So, okay, spoiler, spoiler, if you haven't spoiler alert. finished the book. <laughs> beep, you know, beep. Up, <laughs> I'm spatty at her sound. <laughs> I am, see, you guys haven't told me I can't do sound effects anymore. No, we love hey, your sound welcome effects. <laughs> they have barred me. From sound effects. So unfair. <laughs> I think it was the snort. I think that was, <laughs> and it was. That's too, well, you can snort here anytime. Okay. <laughs> that doesn't sound quite right. I know, I was gonna say, please, <laughs> take it out of context. Yes, that would be a that, little weird. That doesn't work either. I was gonna say, we welcome snorts. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, take it out of context. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I might rephrase that for later. Unfortunately, we can't edit these things. Um, we can't do a take two. That's okay. So, but now it is officially 7.30 and we can do spoilers. Oh, yeah. Right. See, we got, we got through 7.29. Yep. Because I wanted to talk about like the big dr sort of dramatic element in the book when George and um, Daisy yeah. and Piper are on the beach and all of a sudden George is gone. Woof, right? Um, right. And there's, I mean, just gone. Yep. This little matchbox car at the bottom of the hole, which was just so sad. But um, everyone seems to blame themselves. And I'm curious what, what our readers think, who they blame see as responsible, who they blame. Is it Piper um, because she was watching George? You know, Lainey was obsessed with finding her mother and she was writing her correspondence at the time you know 
who who do you think is responsible for Georgia's disappearance? And please share it in the chat too. So are you asking me who I think yes. is responsible? So I, th I think that was the fascinating part for me. So I didn't realize it until later because, and it's a little bit what Once Upon a Wardrobe is about, is that often authors take these pieces of their life and alchemize them or change them or kind of twist them and, and use them in story. I mean, how can we help it, right? And so there was a time um, when my youngest son was about 14 months old and we were living in Atlanta and I was unloading groceries from the car and he was kind of running around in the garage and I came out and he was gone. I'm talking gone. And maybe he was closer to two and, but he was running like, he, so he was probably closer to two. And of course I totally freaked out and we couldn't find him. And I called 911 and he ended up being across the street in the neighbor's garage playing in the dog food. And I had, you know, <laughs> I, I had, um, and it probably wasn't even that long because I think we found him before the police even showed up, but so it wasn't anything like the scene in the book, but I didn't think about that for a long time after that book came out, but I am sure that it had something to do with that scene because I couldn't help but think over and over how it would, I, I wouldn't have been able to live with myself after that if something had happened. And I, but I wasn't doing anything wrong, right? I was literally unloading groceries. I wasn't like out in the backyard having a party. And so, I thought a lot about for Piper, how she was blaming herself anyway for all these things that were going wrong in her family and her life. And I think in a lot of books, I explore this idea of shame and being blamed when nobody else is blaming you, right? That you're the one carrying around this deep sense of wrongness or shame or guilt when Nobody else is doing that and how it affects the decisions you make um, because you think of yourself as a bad person. And I wanted Piper to have to snap out of that. And um, someone interviewed me once, uh, a, a, a man in Alabama, a great guy named Don Noble. And he asked me, he said, I was never that worried because I didn't think you would have George really be gone I mean it was it was high tension but I didn't think and I was like well I didn't know I would I mean I didn't know I was not going to that we'd find him um so yeah he hadn't read surviving Savannah either then <laughs> right I mean I don't spare everyone I know poor Thomas so I you know oh, I don't spare everyone I yeah. I'm still upset over Thomas. Um, Wait, spoiler alert. <laughs> spoiler alert. But, but you know, that was the true story. I well, I know. And I was joking about the, the, yeah. the parallel. Yeah. But yeah, it is funny that he has think because I didn't think that way. I was just like kind of frantic with everybody else because yeah. I had a very slight situation like that when I was Did you? my nephew yes. at the lake Horrible. one time. And he was much older, but all of a sudden he was on the end of the dock. And then all of a sudden, Oh he was poof, gone. Oh, so it was worse. only maybe a minute. So, it, but I was felt just like absolutely, an it did. It felt like an eternity. So I can only imagine in that place what someone yeah. would feel. And you can do it, like you said, you can do everything right and something still can happen. Like you didn't yeah. do anything wrong. Yes. Yep. So, it, you know, there's, I, I, I think that, it, that exploring that for Piper, who was already blaming herself for so much and acting out, I wanted her to kind of have like a, wait a minute, you know, everything that's going wrong in the world is not my fault. Um, Absolutely. Things are yeah. my responsibility, but they're not my fault. So, mm -hmm. right. Lisa, do we have anything to share in the chat? Uh, yes. What did other people say? Did they blame we anyone? Have, well, for the blaming, a couple, we have a couple of Pipers. Okay. Um, 
And then some people are starting to share some of their stories that were similar. Oh, I'll go read them. Yeah. Susie said her heart was racing yeah. and stopped at the same time with George. We got a couple poor Thomas comments. And <laughs> still breathing, Thomas. I, you guys, when I read that in the real account, I was like screaming, no, into the. Like, oh, I can only imagine because they are so. I mean, they were they were real and yeah. they were very real. Yeah. Um, we do have a comment from Penny that says Laney and Piper were both distracted, and George just ran off. So I blame circumstances, not a person. Ah, um, there you go. Now, yeah. see, that is a that is a good answer. I but like if, that. If George I like, we'll end not, with that one. I like that too. Yeah. But if George had not run off, then the the truth would probably not have been. No. Yeah, he, yeah, he brought the truth to them. He brought the truth to Lainey and and brought her closure. So that's yep. and then would you know? Of course, she probably wouldn't have said it was worth it because all yeah. of that time that was spent in agony. But yeah. it really did provide that link to where her mother was. And I like that idea. I know y'all do too. Of um, what we think is terrible um, ends up being something else altogether, you know, that but what you're going through at the moment feels yeah. so awful. And, but then as it unfolds, it brings you to a completely new place. I don't care. I mean, whether it's cancer or, you know, whatever uh, circumstance. Uh, there you go. And it brings it you brings to a new, you place. To a completely new oh, place. Oh, I can hear my phone. I'm, I'm so sorry. Head. I was like, what is that? I'm sorry, that was me. <laughs> I, was like, I get to hear myself. Ooh, it spontaneously started again. <laughs> Just turn, turn it off. I have it. <laughs> All right. Well, comedy of errors, right? Yes. Sorry. Outside. Live TV, people. Live yeah. TV. I'm kidding. And Sorry, my innocent desire to pull a comment from the chat resulted See, in. Uh, I got you covered. I <laughs> know. I shouldn't have tried. I should have just let Lisa yeah. do it. <laughs> Just like they don't let me do sound effects, they don't let hey, you pull the comments. I have a comment for you. Hey, from Lisa, Meg. Go ahead. Meg says, no sound effects allowed for Peach. See? <laughs> Meg wanted to put that, she put that in the chat. So I figured I could. Thanks a lot, Meg. <laughs> I do have a question. We have a couple of questions, but Susan says, do you have any plans to maybe write a sequel to this book? She'd love to know how Piper's story progresses and to see how everyone else resolves their lives. You know, I never say never, ever. Um, I have thought about writing like a novella or a short story and just kind of showing where people are and what happened to them and maybe another, you know, hurdle they have to overcome. But I don't have anything in the works, but I do think about it and I never say never. Well, I, I must say I'm really curious because, you know, Bonnie and Lainey had that lifelong friendship. Yep. And there was this sort of wedge between them in her sort of, you know, secret, not secret, but relationship with Owen and communication with Owen. And yep. now that kind of got split open and bookshop yeah but I want to know what happens to Owen <laughs> I know <laughs> I think you know the only other book I did that with where I left it a little bit you know that you know but you don't know um is in um losing the moon so these are the two books I get the most can we please have a sequel and see what happens so we have quite a few requests for a sequel and they want okay to I'll I can promise you this, I will give it a lot of thought because I think it, I think it would be interesting and not only because we want to find out what happens to some of these people, but also because this town is so interesting, which is why it shows up again in The Favorite Daughter and you meet the family that owns the pub and I've always thought it might be interesting for all the families to intersect, so we'll see. So you're saying there's a chance. There's a chance. <laughs> She left the door open. It's so interesting to me too. And I, and I know there's more comments for Lisa to, 
to to pull because I'm not allowed to anymore. Uh, but I just love the novels where it's the same place, but you pick up these different, you know, pieces of the story and it kind of makes the whole fabric of the community. And I just love it. And I don't know exactly how to, you know, categorize that, but I just love it in, in my novels. Thank you. It's fun to write too, because I already know the town, right? I know when you turn left, here is the pub and there's the library and there's the bookshop. And um, yeah. I have a feel for the setting in such a deep way. And the setting is as, as important as the characters. So, yeah. Well, especially, yes, especially in, in your books and, and in this setting, because again, the water and the, the landscape is so important to it. Well, we've got a question from Maria from the chat, and I'm curious to hear this as well. When Loretta was, she says, when Loretta was introduced, she thought maybe that would be Lainey's mom because of the sunflowers. So how did you decide you wanted to end it the way you did and not have the mom be still on the island? Um, you know, I went round and round and, and, not the problem, but the dilemma with a big reveal or a mystery that you're trying to unfold in a story, a dirty little secret is that even the author usually doesn't know. And so I'm following the clues while you're following the clues and trying to decide what and, and there were times I thought she was too, and that I would let that unfold. But as, as I started to get to know the characters, as I started to understand who they were, as I started to, to know what Lainey needed, which wasn't necessarily to find her mother as much as find out what happened to her mother. And this, the idea of her mother having been there the whole time didn't, feel true. I won't use realistic because you can do anything you want in fiction, but it didn't feel true for me. So that's, that's why. Well, we have a, quite a few people in the chat saying they're talking amongst themselves and said that it could be your Christmas novella for next year, hint, hint. Mary. And the family can intersect at Christmas time and then I have to read Diane's comment. Diane, That's a great you, crack idea. Me, you crack me up on, on a daily basis, Diane, but I have to share this. <laughs> I'm 76 years old, so please hurry up and write this. <laughs> okay. I don't know how I could write any faster than I am. If I wrote any faster than I'm working now, I'd be Christy Woodson Harvey. So I will do my best. <laughs> That girl writes like That's lightning. So funny. That yeah. is hilarious, though, that comment. Are y'all still doing your writing sprints now that everybody's on book tour? No, we, way? I mean, Kathy is because she's, she, or Mary Kay is because she's, she's finishing her summer novel. But, um, and so is um, Kristen. But uh, Christy and I are both um, in prep mode right yep. at the moment. So, Full time book tour, full time friends in fiction, and full time friends in fiction <laughs> and essays and Q and A's. No, we're both writing, but like that hardcore, like sprint to the finish Sorry. line. Yeah, not at the exact moment. Yeah. Sorry, I took that moment to wander off again. No, I love it. <laughs> That's our best discussions. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We could, we could talk to you. Forever. But we do check in every day. Did you get some words in? Did you get your pages done? Um, so it's not like during COVID where Kathy would text us at 7 a.m. and say, are you writing? Now it's more like, okay, who got their words done today? And you do feel a certain accountability to be able to say, well, I at least touched the project today or I'm stuck today or I haven't figured out who did it yet or whatever it might be. So we still do do that every day. Since you're talking about writing, this goes right into one of our advanced questions. Um, Irene Justice asks, before writing, do you create an outline and do you have any tips on outlining? So oh, um, I'm much more of an outliner now than I was before. 
And part of that is because I'm writing historical fiction at the moment and I have to really abide by, it's very important to me to abide by mm -hmm. the facts and by what's in front of us. So yes, I do outline. We had on, this is gonna be my piece of advice since you're asking. We had a bonus episode recently with a man named John Truby and his wife, Leslie Lear, who um, teach writing. He has a book called Anatomy of Story. And he talks a lot in there about why, he doesn't use the word outline, but he has what he calls the seven steps, which can expand to 22 steps. But I very much do Truby seven steps before I start writing. And the steps are about what does your care, and I talk about this a lot. What does your character want? Why can't they get what they want? And I, so I don't know if I would call what I'm doing an outline, but I do try to get the overall arching storyline so that I don't waste so much time running down rabbit trails. Um, I probably, I don't want to tell you, in fact, I won't tell you how many times I wrote this book. And part of that was because there's a lot of points of view. And part of it is because I didn't take the time to do what I'm talking about. But if, um, the woman who's asking, I'm sorry, who was it? Who asked? Irene. Irene, if you'll, I'm telling you, watch that episode because I could spend another half hour here talking about it, but he and Leslie do this fantastic job explaining why outlining matters and the different ways to do it. So the short answer is yes, I do do more of it now, but not like a term paper with Roman numerals, more um, these kind of seven steps. That's I love that. Yeah. Um, we have another question from Julie and she says, how did you get so insightful about the meaning of life? from your own career change or something else in your life? Ooh, heavy question. Wow. Well, first of all, that is the nicest thing anyone said to me today or this month. <laughs> um, I, I don't think I am. Like we were sort of joking earlier about our characters are smarter than we are in many ways. But if there's any wisdom that comes through and I, I, it means a lot to me that you say that. I am constantly listening to podcasts and philosophies. And I, you know, that question people ask about what would you do if you weren't a writer? I'd probably be, want to be a psychotherapist. I love all of that. I love reading about it. I love archetypes. I love psychology. I love mythology. I love podcasts on why we do what we do. Um, so I think I'm very motivated by human nature, why we do the things we do, why we love the things we love, why we ruin the things we ruin and break the things we break. Um, why as humans, we, we, we say we want one thing and then we do the thing that keeps us from getting it, right? I just am endlessly fascinated with those kinds of things about being human and the brokenness of being human. So that's kind of you to ask. So I, I'm always diving into those essentially unanswerable questions. Um, but I think the best way to answer those questions sometimes is in story. Mm. Oh, I love that so much. I'm not sure I answered it, but oh yes, yeah, that you was did. Helpful. You did. <laughs> wow, I can't believe it's we only have ten minutes left. I was, yeah, I was just I know. Up. I was like, and oh we, my gosh. And we still have. Did we? Did you have one more question, or did we need to? Do we need to move on to? Well, we've got a couple of questions. We have a lot. <laughs> okay, well, let's, let's, we'll one, try to I do our announcements quickly. I'll go to the page tomorrow. Yeah. I promise. I promise. Yeah. I'll try to answer whatever's I have. I'm, uh, yeah. I have a one we'll ask after you do the announcements. Okay. Or you have a question, I think, for her, though, about. Well, what, yeah. Well, what I'd like to do is maybe I'll 
I'll do the announcements and the question and then yesterday, how about that? Okay. Well, we wanted to let everybody know what our upcoming schedule is because there's it's a lot so going good. on. Your schedule is so much fun. <laughs> I was writing the script for Wednesday night and I was working on your schedule and I was like, oh my gosh, they have so much good stuff coming up. Okay. <laughs> it's really exciting. I was thinking, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to start doing this, um, you know, full time. <laughs> I know that but, feeling. Okay. I know, right? So, I, wish. I, wish I, <laughs> I know, I wish too. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Agency. I know, right? <laughs> Don't put that in the universe. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, there's a lot of neat things coming up. This Thursday, we're going to celebrate Mary Kay Andrews pre-publication day for the Santa suit. And we're going to be sharing cookie recipes. So I'm be so sure excited. to tune in on Thursday. And then at, we have at 7 Eastern, at 7 p.m. Eastern. That's right. Yeah. And then we have Ron Flock dropping in again on October 1st for another happy hour with book He's recommendations. We haven't seen Ron Ooh. since we did his little... um. Yeah, we have our, cut out our, with us in <laughs> our happy hour photo. With He's Ron. awesome. That's going to be the logo for happy hours until we can get one with That's him. Awesome. That's right. And then we're super excited to announce this one, which we haven't put on our page yet, is Patty is going to have a pre-pub day for Once Upon a Wardrobe. Yep. And that's going to be on October 17th at 1 p.m. Eastern. So it's going to be a brunch uh, brunch yeah, little British day. tea. We'll have a British yes. tea. Yes, or once a virtual brunch, brunch with Patty. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make it a we boozy it. brunch. How's that? Yes. I'll do the boozy brunch. Okay. It's a deal. Uh, and I'll do the faux boozy. <laughs> She'll there do the mocktail boozy. <sighs> and so, one and more quick announcement that I would like to share um, our October book is The Orphan Wish by a good awesome. friend of yours, Patty. And our book discussion is gonna be on October 25th at 7 p.m. And we are excited to welcome Paige. This will be our first non-Fab Five author book club discussion. And I, I really love that book and I'm so glad you chose it for October. And oh, she's wonderful. so interesting yeah. and so sweet. And I'm so happy y'all chose that. That's awesome. She's Awesome. I, I love a wishy vibe. I was, I was very excited that she agreed. If you follow her on Instagram, y'all, to get ready for that, she has a great witchy vibe on her Instagram too. It's oh, awesome. I love it. Yeah. She's, she's been really nice to me and Brenda. So we're, we're so excited. Yes, yeah, so we're really looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to, to back up to this week again, Wiley Cash being live from yeah. Charlotte on yeah. fiction. So there's all kinds of things happening. We, we got your weekends, your weeks. We got, you we got it going on. Yeah, we totally, got it totally. So, Patty, we do, we are really excited about your pre-pub day, and we do want to talk about your event yesterday. How, what, how was that, having a conversation with Douglas Gresham, the stepson of C.S. Lewis, and having had a day to digest it, what, what are your thoughts? It was, you know, I have had many discussions with Douglas. I'm on, you know, I have a podcast with him and we're, right. and we're good pals, but doing it on a Zoom with Dr. David Downing, who is the head of the Wade Center and a, I mean, a, a true scholar of Narnia. I was, I told y'all before we came on, I was oddly nervous. I was like a little mm -hmm. nervous, um, <laughs> but it was so fascinating. I hope it was fascinating to the people who listened um, but for me, I've talked to both of them on podcasts and had interviews, but they both seemed to really open up yesterday about how they felt about the characters in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, how Douglas felt about losing his mother, then losing his father, then losing Lewis and growing up with Narnia, and what Narnia has meant to him for his whole life from the moment his mother started reading it to him in, in his childhood, you know, tuck into bedtime to now in his seventies, what, what Narnia is. And he is the last living person who lived with C.S. Lewis. So he has some really great insight. And for, if y'all missed it and want to watch it, um, I'll get a link to it and um, I'll, I'll post about it on Friends and Fiction and on my Facebook page, but when you buy the book, you can get the link to, to watch the interview. 
it went well over an hour, which it wasn't supposed to. But I mean, and I still didn't get to ask half, half the questions that I had and that other people had in the live Q&A. But thank you for asking. I hope you all enjoyed it. I thought it was extraordinary. Oh, it was amazing, especially uh, mostly because of the interaction among the three of you. It, yeah. it, it just made it, it made it such a special thing. So anyone who has not, um, you know, gotten the book and watched it, it was an awesome experience. Yeah. And I hate that I missed it, but I'm excited to know that I still have an opportunity to see it. Yes. And between Brenda's glowing review and <laughs> I, I have to, I know I'm going off, but I, I have to share with you the description of, from everyone in the chat who watched yesterday. Oh, I'd love to know. The words, awesome, absolutely fabulous, amazing. Oh. Yeah, that event was moving. It was fascinating. I'm still in awe. Oh. Yesterday's event was fantastic, so informative. It was great. I learned so much. It was amazing. I could listen to it again and again. Oh, that's so, so sweet. I, I just... It was touching. Yeah, I felt, oh, that's a good word, whoever said that. It was very touching. I think Douglas really opened up. He, he, he got a little bit upset talking about his childhood in boarding school and how he and Lewis both went through really bad boarding school experiences and how they bonded over it. It was beautiful. So thanks, y'all. Thanks for asking. Yay. That's how cool. did we get to 7.58? Is that, is my, that's. That, that is right. correct. I know That's we could correct. go for another, you know, oh, right. but yesterday <laughs> was that way too. I was left one, definitely left one. Oh, I know. So you will not be disappointed. And I don't know if y'all noticed, but three times I said, just one more question. <laughs> <laughs> now, before we end, just like, now, before we say goodbye. <laughs> That's, That's what I, I do that. I've done that to you. Betty. <laughs> I'm fine with it. We're having a blast. I'm fine with it. I know. Well, I am just, it has been such a great evening. I know I hate to end it because it, but it's eight o'clock. I just can't believe it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But Patty said she would be around. So if you have any more questions for her, uh, put them on the book club page and she yep. will be there to answer them. And thank um, you. On my Sharon. website, there's a book club kit with, with some like backstory yeah. and um, but I will. I'll pop on the page tomorrow, I promise. And y'all join us Wednesday night. Yes, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I'm. It's my mom's birthday, so I Is hope I really? can watch live, but I'll definitely watch it. I, oh, I'm so happy excited to birthday, her. Lisa's mom. What's your mom's That's name? That's right. Joyce. 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 Yeah. Happy birthday, Joyce. <laughs> She'll probably be watching too. She's a big, I, yeah, she's, yeah, she's a, she was watching. So she's probably watching. <laughs> that's awesome. Happy birthday. Well, I'd sing, for, I'd sing, but it's as bad as my sound effects. So it's well, not going to happen. Not going to happen for me either. So she'll yeah, have to settle for a happy it. birthday, Joyce, from me. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Patty. We had such a great time tonight talking about Bookshop at Water's End. Y'all are awesome. Just wonderful. Thanks, You're awesome. Thanks for being here. Okay, I'll see you tonight. in a bit. Thanks, Thank ladies. You. Bye. Bye bye. Bye, Patty. Oh, that was so wonderful. What a great <laughs> night discussing this wonderful book. I know, and I can't hold it up because I have it on my Kindle. I still <laughs> prefer that. Welcome to the after show, everyone. That hard Thanks for sticking with us. We had a couple of questions in the chat that were for us, TV. Oh, really? Okay. Um, one thing I want to clarify, our book for The Orphan Witch is by Paige Crutch. I was so excited about the book, I didn't say the author's name. So oh. I wanted to, it's by Paige Crusher. It comes out on September 28th. So oh, it's same available day. for the same day as Mary Kay. As Mary Kay's, yeah. And Leslie Hooten. That's a big day for our, our friends and fiction authors. Oh, and that's going to be a big week for Anissa's uh, new release list then. Yeah. <laughs> Anissa's had, list. I'm curious to see. You know, I wonder. I'll look in the chat if she's still watching. Um, I wonder <laughs> how many books she has that day because that seems like a busy, a busy day. Yeah, it does. So, busy what was puppy. the question for us? So, I am sorry because of the chat goes so fast, guys. I saw oh. the question, but I'm sorry. I don't remember who asked it. But the question was. 
how long does it take for us to organize a book club discussion like this? Like our prep time and oh, I think they want a little peek behind the scenes oh. of what PB and J does when we're not live. Okay. Snorting and laughing, putting <laughs> <laughs> water on the side. Okay. Well, <laughs> um, I, real. Guess, I guess I'll I'll kind of kick that one off and then then throw it to Lisa, which is kind of how we do we do a lot of back and forth. Um we kind of decide what posts we're gonna do in advance of the uh, book. And actually the past few have been really easy because the authors have gotten on the page and have shared all kinds of great details um, about their book. Um, that's one thing I would like to do more of though, is to share things that I feel about the book and at least the feels about the book as we go along. Um, but I guess I'll kick it to you now because then we, we do have official planning. Well, once we go through the initial stage, and we have of what we like about the book. We always, me and Brenda, we meet, we talk every day because I can't, apparently I can't not talk. I can't, I bug her more than she does. <laughs> we're, we're, we're really good friends. And so we talk every day, but we meet by Zoom once a week to talk about the book club stuff for about an hour and a half. Typically, sometimes it could sometimes be Sometimes a little. If I'm chatty. <laughs> sometimes we it goes a wee bit longer. <laughs> Day and night, late at night, we'll be texting or I'll think of something for book club. And Jodena, we, you know, I think we're starting to infiltrate her time too. We, at least I know I text Jodena late at night or send her messages. And we'll meet with her as well. So. I mean, it's flavor of love. We love doing it for you. It's hard to put a time frame on it. Um, it is because there's the straightforward book club discussion time that we plan and that we, you know, kind of pull questions and we do all of that. But then there's also kind of brainstorming like, hey, what if we did, you know, yeah, what if we and did Thanksgiving? We, what if we did? <laughs> right. We still need to pick a date for that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But all of our other events plan and we discuss so we we're, we're always we're always doing it we're always working it um but we love it you know we love yeah. doing it. you guys it's fulfilling for us to see how many people enjoy it and then we enjoy it as well because we we have a great relationship with the authors but we also have great relationships with so many of you and even if We've never met you and we haven't seen you. We see your comments and we know who you are. That's right. And that's the cool people thing. People know who we are. Sometimes, which sometimes it's cool. <laughs> uh, the, that's Lisa, not me. She's the one who has like I'm become the Atlanta Brenda, fixture. Brenda gets a kick out of that. Um, I do. And I will say too that we each do kind of like I was joking about. we we do different things that we, that are our strength. You know, Lisa is better at pulling chat than I am. Like I just demonstrated <laughs> tonight, although it's usually not that obvious. <laughs> it's the but, phone. It'll be loud. <laughs> yeah. I don't usually try it on the phone, but, um, and then I do a lot of outlining and, and stuff that, and, um, but anyway, that didn't really, we just rambled on, but hopefully that answers <laughs> some of your questions. It's, it's hours per week, definitely for sure, that we spend and, planning. Yeah. One other, one other thing I want to clarify, we have a question from Denise in the chat, but it's good to go ahead and say this. Um, she asked if our book club meetings are recorded. And yes, all of our book club discussions are recorded. And if you're on the page, you can go to the announcements tab and you'll see all of, not just the discussions, but all of the recorded, our happy hours are recorded, um, our book club discussions, our pre-pub day parties. The only things that are not recorded are our informal chats. And when we do special things like what we just did with Leslie Hooten last week, um, it's a, called behind the pages. If we ever do that, those won't be recorded because they're intimate discussions kind of just for who's there. It's a great experience, but um, you'll be able to find our announcements under the announcements tab. And we will have 
all of our schedule with the events you can find under the events tab. So that's that's really it. That's it. And I will add that I'm going to I'm working on a way at least to provide links to the the sort of archived chats because the technology, the way we're doing it with Zoom doesn't really caption each episode. So yeah. you kind of have to hunt around and they all kind of look the same because they're Zoom to right. Facebook Live. So we're working on that. But if you're you know, if, if you have trouble finding anything and you need one of us to, to help, just, you know, just message us and we'll help. But I'm trying to figure out a way to make that a little bit more organized so that people who just joined the book club recently can go back and look at some of those episodes from like last year when we started. Yeah. And you can also send us an email at friendsandfictionbookclub at gmail.com. And we'll be able to respond that way too. If right. you can't get us on Messenger. <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed tonight. I hope I know so too. Did. I was looking forward to it all day. Me too. <laughs> I was too. So we love having having the authors on. And Patty was just, I know she'd been traveling all day and but <laughs> she was excited. She was She's like, I yeah, can't wait. She was tonight. a great guest. She was ready. <laughs> Well, we hope you join us on Thursday for our pre-pub day for the Santa suit with Mary Kay Andrews, which I I love Mary Kay so much. I'm going to celebrate celebrate Christmas before Halloween, which is something which is I know unheard of. Not do. Yes, I think that's I unheard, think that of, is for unheard of for you. Oh, but that's also, how much I love them. <laughs> we're, we're also going to ask you to share your cookie recipes also. Yes, I'm looking forward to that. Maybe I'll make yes. Them. We'll be posting that on the page as well. So yeah. I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of the evening. Um, we enjoy it so much and we just appreciate everyone yeah. loving reading as much as we do. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Take Thank care. Thank you for joining us. Good night, everyone. Night. <laughs>